welcome to my home. My name is Jessica T. Arena, and this is another episode of Jessica's Kitchen, Tips, Tricks, and Hacks. Today, after talking with a bunch of my friends and colleagues and that kind of thing for throughout the last couple of days, I've been asking, you know, what are some of the things that you guys want to learn? What are the, some of the things that are going to be the most helpful to you in general for all time, but, you know, maybe more specifically to what we're all going through right now? What are some of the things that can help us you know, save some money or, you know, uh, benefit us through in the long run altogether. So one of those things was how much money we all spend on stocks and broths. Um, you know, they're up to like four bucks, sometimes six, even eight dollars for something like a bone broth or a chicken broth or a chicken stock. Granted, we don't all have time to make those types of things, but what makes it really quick and what makes it also feel a little bit better about us as far as the uh, no waste goes in the kitchen is making it on our own with the scraps that we have. Now I've been doing this for 25 years or longer um, since I've been cooking and it's one of the things that I teach in almost all of my classes because for the most part I have a no waste kitchen and I'm very proud of that because I really want to be able to use everything that I buy. Uh, so some of those things for, um, it kind of came into my head to do this quickly today because my partner also cooks uh, every once in a while and he's making his sausage and lentil stew for dinner tonight and it all kind of went into the slow cooker this morning and it just, uh, I watched him as he was about to throw some of the scraps into the compost and I was like, wait, wait, don't put those in there. Um, we have a, a couple of different Ziploc bags in our freezer that we save scraps for specifically for broths and stocks, typically vegetable broth. Um, I don't bring home a lot of whole rotisserie chickens, but when I do, that's when I make my chicken stock and broth. Um, it's the best to use because it's been slow roasted, it's got great flavor, um, and then you just plop that in with all the vegetables that you have, and that is how you make that. So I wanna show you guys just some examples on things that I use. You can make stock and fresh from all the stuff you have in your refrigerator, no matter what, but why not also use it with all the scraps that you have? So for example, I have this, uh, you guys can see here, a uh, piece of garlic and it's a garlic bulb and it's got kind of the, um, oh, there you go. You know, the stem and the, and the bits and pieces. And so I'm just gonna kind of take all that garlic off the bulb end of the um, root end there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that and I'm gonna put that in my trusty Ziploc bag that I keep in my freezer at all times. Sometimes I have smaller bags if I'm gonna do one of just a lot of herbs. Sometimes my herbs are about to go brown, they're kind of slimy, but they're not like, you just wouldn't use them in a salad, let's say that. You can still use them flavor-wise for your stock and to infuse the flavor, enhance the flavor of an herb or of a um, uh, vegetable stock. And so I'll have a separate bag of just herbs. Sometimes I'll just write rosemary on it or thyme or you know whatever it is that I have. Sometimes chives, that kind of stuff. And so I'm gonna throw just this root end of the garlic in my bag. And also in that bag is gonna, are gonna go things like the root end of my onion is gonna go in there. You know, some random root ends of a green onion, of a scallion, peels of a carrot, skins of the onions, skins of garlic, all that is gonna go right in there. I get a lot of, um, why, you're gonna put skins in there? Why would you do that? Oh, the dirty root end? Feel free to rinse it off and wash it before you put it in there, that's fine. You should be washing your vegetables anyways before you start cutting them. But they're all gonna go in this bag and then eventually when the bag gets maybe half full or totally full, you're gonna put all of that into a pot of boiling water no salt, maybe some peppercorns, maybe some, like I said, some herbs. Uh, you don't wanna put things in there like stems of herbs. I learned this uh, the hard way. Uh, rosemary stems or, uh, or even oregano stems, if they get real woody, they're gonna have kind of that um, fibrous feel. They're gonna be kind of like a stick. Well, they give a really bitter flavor to your overall product. So you really don't wanna use those. You wanna use the leaves more often than not. And again, they, you know, when your rosemary starts to go bad, they go from green to brown to slimy to moldy. That green to brown to maybe even a little slimy, definitely not moldy, can still be used for stocks and broths. 
because you're putting them in there, you're infusing the flavor, and then in the end, 35 to an hour later, you're just gonna sieve that out. You're just gonna strain it all out. Those vegetables are done. You've taken all the flavor, the nutrients, everything out of them at this point, so there's really no sense in using them for anything else. If you have, uh, maybe you wanna give them to the rabbits in the backyard, who knows? Uh, maybe you'll have a hobby farm and you have pigs, you can give them those scraps as well. Um, that's really no waste, which would be great. For me, they either go in my compost or in my garden, depends on how, uh, how much I need them for my garden at that time. So again, like I said, carrots, you can peel a carrot. Those peels, those peels are gonna go right into that bag, like I said. Just the peels, right into the bag. Uh, and those can be put in the freezer for, I don't know, up to three to four months before you actually have to use them. Uh, and I just, you know, end up peeling everything. I use it for my soup, my stocks. A uh, good example, so here's my celery stock. So you guys can tell on there the difference in color between this and that. So this celery, it's starting to turn a little bit yellow and a little brown, and you really wouldn't use that for much. Uh, but I am gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut it into a couple larger chunks, and I'm gonna stick it right in that bag. And that's gonna go right in the freezer again for up to a max about four months. Once you make your stock and broth, that can last in the freezer up to a good four months or in your fridge up to a week. Um, maybe a little bit longer with vegetable stock. If you're gonna use a beef or a chicken or any kind of a meat or protein-based broth or stock, it's gonna last a little bit less, so no longer than a week. Uh, but yeah, so when cutting an onion, even the skins of that onion is gonna go in that bag and you use for broth at a later time. That is all I have for you guys today. That was kind of a quick tips, tricks, and kitchen hacks from you guys. My a recipe for all stocks, I have one for vegetable stock, chicken stock, beef stock, seafood stock, um, and game, veal, that kind of thing on my website. So jessicatiarena.com. In the search menu, just go ahead and enter stocks or broth, and you'll get a whole bunch of different recipes that pop up. Go ahead and start saving your scraps, you guys. Oh, one thing to, to mention, some of the things you don't wanna put in that bag for scraps are the ones that are gonna make your broth bitter. Those are gonna be your brassicas or your cruciferous vegetables. So those are gonna be things like broccoli, kale, cabbage, sprout, uh, Brussels sprouts, turnips, rutabaga, uh, artichoke, some of that kind of stuff. If you let it simmer too long, it's gonna get real bitter, kind of like those stems of some of those herbs I was talking about earlier on. Um, so you'll just discard those, unfortunately. Not much you can do with those scraps, unless, again, you have animals that you can feed them to. Um, I wouldn't really do that. But as far as uh, other vegetables, kind of the world is your oyster. You just realize that things like a red onion skin or beets are gonna turn it a little bit pink and red. Uh, and I think I have a small example here from, uh, let's see, this was from October um, that I made a, a, some broth and some stock. This is a vegetable and it turned out very dark, so I must have used some herbs in there as well and maybe some red onion skin. It's a little pink as well, so I either use red onion skin or maybe some beet skins in here. But you don't want too many beets or you're going to get a really beet flavor unless you're making something like a borscht. Then, of course, you want something like that. Same with something like a mushroom. You don't want too many mushrooms in your broth, otherwise it's going to be really fungi flavor, which could be great if you're doing a mushroom soup, but not if it's something that you're gonna do some sort of a light soup. Then you're gonna get a really strong mushroom flavor. That's it again today. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Tune in for the next one, which I don't know when that'll be. Could be today, could be tomorrow. Tune in, thanks for watching. Go ahead and go to my blog, jessicatiarena.com. You'll get updated recipes every day and access to over 350 recipes I already have. I can't wait to start teaching you guys again and to doing things in classes with you all around me. That'll be fun. Until then, you guys get this. Thank you so much. Be healthy, be safe, wash your hands. Have a great afternoon.